Hi, this is Kim Watson of Easy Trader. Welcome to a review of the key economic news events that are being released in the coming week. Okay, so the main picture really is the Greek settlement uh, Greek agreement is a solution. Uh, oh, it's not really a solution. Pro possibly delaying the inevitable. That's whether the uh, rest of Europe continues subsidizing Greece for some time to come or <laughs> the possibility of Greece eventually leaving uh, the euro so interesting uh, time ahead but we've got this delayed now for four months so we'll be talking about this in in the coming months i'm sure more to the point now though we're looking at the u.s situation with the gdp statement um, coming out positively apart from inflation and of course the statements from the fed yelling uh, she, uh, so suggesting that we, we we could still be on for the base in rate increases in june they're very worried about scaring the markets one way or the other and they're, they're really trying to place this so that it's priced in when it's happening and there's no real shock so no doubt the markets will start and if they haven't already priced it in, in towards June it'll be priced in towards June and if it doesn't well then I think we'll see this, this shocks later on in the year so let's have a, have a look at the week ahead uh, starting off with the usual uh, early month we're looking at the PMI figures for the UK uh, UK manufacturing figures coming out. Now I've, I've put some figures on here. This is the expectation theory and my, my expectation theory of the sort of movie, movement we normally get in pips. So generally we get around about a 20 pip move off this unless it's significantly different. These, this is the sort of average uh, move we've had for some time now. Now in terms of trading these as I've said for many months now the, the old way of trading them for us uh, with our news based trading has has disappeared in a sense because as as the markets have become more volatile so have the spreads become wider and the slippage has increased so when you see movements of 20 pips it looks quite good until you're trying to catch some of that action so the 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 potential to catch that is not so great but at least it gives you an idea of where the sort of levels that the price will move later in the morning morning we've got the cpi flash estimates for the euro uh, coming in at 10 o'clock now looking back this this figure is the flash estimate so it comes out quite quickly but we've seen a lot of figures coming out already individually so it really only gives us a, some a, some sort of expectation theory of around 15 pips and following on in the afternoon we've got the ISM manufacturing figures the US figures coming out at three o'clock and again similar to the UK this gives us some sort of theory of, of, the, uh, of, the, of pricing of around 20 pip movement quite often Next Tuesday, for those that like getting up early or are already up, for our uh, Australian friends, at 3:30 uh, uh, a.m., <laughs> we, we've got the uh, Australian uh, interest rate uh, decision. Generally, this gives a, 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 around about a 30 pip move. What we often see. Last time we saw around about 100 or more, as as the rate was uh, unexpectedly changed and cut. Now there is starting to become expectation that that will carry on at some point but for now uh, we, we're, it's, it's largely expected to be left alone this coming month but any uh, again surprises here and it, generally with the Australian Reserve, um, Reserve Bank we we tend to see um, exit surprises rather than actual um, th figures that are sort of quoted in there so it's, it's more sh shocks and surprises so we generally get these bigger moves of 100 pips etc when that happens but for now the normal sort of movement may be around about the 30 pip range looking ahead for later in the morning then we've got the construction PMI estimated uh, expectancy theory coming in around about 20 pips now this does dip a little bit and can be quite shallow at times in terms of t towards the sort of 10 area it really has moved off the sort of key focus uh, has a, uh, as has the manufacturing numbers that have come out so it's um, it's, it's reduced its significance somewhat then moving on we got to uh, the Bank of England uh, Carney testifying now it's actually testifying on the currency probe so I, I'm not putting any theory or, or expectation on this so it's just a bear bearing in mind he's testifying at 10 o'clock Wednesday a bit busier day Australian GDP coming out now the um, it's coming out at uh, 30 minutes past midnight UK time um, the theory uh, is uh, expectation sort of levels somewhere out rare between the 30 and 60 pips generally 
uh, we, you could see this slowing down some more but the, the the thing is as the market tends to start building in slowdowns and it changes of course the, the, the more they build in and the, the more something's different the bigger than the, some of the moves that we see in the UK we've got the services PMI services rate as a very high level front end number because of the uh, the percentage of the UK GDP that is services based so uh, that said it's still only nowadays as we've been moving forward in the last six to nine months really been given us sort of the numbers are around about 20 pips so it's not moving anywhere near the sort of 30 40 pips we'd once seen now of course that could all change again as we go forward and it could change any month but at the moment it's, it's been coming out pretty much in line Moving on to midday, we've got the non-farm payrolls at 115. These are the uh, sort of numbers that we see around this because it's just so far out so often. It really has died off and it's dropped down to around about 10 pips now. We would expect, bearing in mind the focus on non-farms, we would expect a much bigger movement on this, but it's just not happening. It, I think more and more traders are moving away from it as, as any sort of guide as it's so often so far wrong. We have got uh, later in the afternoon coming out at the same time. So for the CAD dollar, uh, the US dollar, Canadian dollar uh, traders, there could be a bit mess around about three o'clock. Um, but we've got the Canadian uh, uh, Bank of Canada interest rate decision coming out. Now we've seen again uh, the expectation sort of levels of between 30 and if, if any shocks. And again, they shocked last time, and we saw about 180 pip movement there. So it can move significantly normal rates around about the 30 pip move if nothing's touched and as I said at the same time we've got the US non-manufacturing non i.e. the services PMI coming out at 3 o'clock this in normal terms gives relatively small move so if you're as I say trading the US dollar CAD well you may get sort of a, a contra flow you may, a contra move you may need to look at a different CAD pairing uh, Euro CAD or something uh, to get the benefits of any interest rate movements. Moving into Thursday, Bank of England interest rate decision. Now we've seen sort of 11 pip moves and that's about it, 10, 11. It's, it's really just the, the market almost ignores it of late because there's nothing being changed and it's pretty, pretty marked that nothing's being changed. The minutes will move it much more these days than the, the decision itself and the statements that come with it. The European ECB meeting is on the same day this month again, and at 12:45. Now, it's, I, I put non, not applicable in terms of uh, expectation because this month it could be. I'm not too sure with, when we see the rate decision and statement whether there'll be more cont more content contained in there or whether we'll see it when Draghi speaks at the press conference at 1:30 in terms of the financial easing. But uh, that generally, the uh, press conferences give, have been given somewhere in the region of. 40 pips now i put 40 to 80 this is often we we we, we can often get this sort of uh, zigzag approach he starts talking moves in one way and then flies the other way so it it, it makes it makes some volatility certainly and i'd be watching out for the volatility at 130 but it can also give some reasonable trades finally friday like one only, only one main figure there is the u.s non-farm payrolls at 130 now as mentioned earlier there, there seems to be the sort of move towards June for potential interest rate increases. Part of that is based on the, the jobs reports, the employment reports, particularly wage inflation, and of course not the employment numbers themselves, but wage inflation and employment, if, if it continues running well, uh, keep continuing about the 200,000 new jobs each month, we, we seem to be on the roll for the confirming towards the June interest rate increase. If we see anything significantly falling short here, we could see the, the, the US dollar sold off quite strongly. But for now, it's uh, obviously a very key, key figure. I, I haven't put an expectation number in there. It used to move 40 to 60, even 80 pips, almost guaranteed each month. It's it's got a lot more volatile, but there there are still potential good uh, moves and points to be had in that particular trade. Okay, that's it for me. Hope you have a great week. Uh, bye for now.